again, everybody. Welcome back to The Huddle, the Review.com's weekly high school sports show. I'm Rob Toter, joined as always by Jeff Supanik. And let's start today with a congratulations to the Alliance Aviators, the undisputed NBC champions for 2017, and a playoff participant in Division Three Region 9. Jeff, uh, your thoughts before we move on to the playoffs on that alliance Barlington game. It was really all it lived, uh, was hyped up to be. Yeah, it, I mean, I've seen... Every one of them since 2005, since they both became it, it was by far the best. I mean, it was everything you'd expected with everything that was on the line. Both teams went after it. Tremendous respect after the game. And, and congr- yeah, congratulations to Alliance. I mean, you went out and you earned it. You know, there was no two ways about it. They won the game. Congratulations to them. Uh, the Aviators, of course, uh, their only loss of the season to Canfield, who's the number one seed in Region 9. But, from that week two loss, Alliance just continued to get better every week. They they uh, had a tough game against West Branch mm-hmm. of all teams, so 49-45. That game's always a well-played game as well. But really down the stretch, other than that West Branch game, the Louisville game, and, and probably the, the Marlington game, Alliance really dominated their opponents at the yeah. NBC. Very senior-oriented team, so that's what you would expect. They went ahead took care of business. They didn't, or didn't realize, you know, when Marlington had the lead in that game, I asked Coach Whiting afterward, he said that was the first time they trailed because they were down 7 nothing to Canton South about four weeks earlier. So that, again, sign of a veteran team. You can get that lead early yeah. and then just not let team. But I was very impressed with the Lions all season. And I think you saw the West Branch game. Whenever they score, when they gave up a score, they always answered it. And I, yeah, and I think that's a testament to a true championship team. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let's turn our attention to the playoffs. And Alliance is the number five seed just missing out. Uh, you can look at it a number of different ways. Notre Dame Cathedral Latin had to win their last game of the season to get that four seed. But also, the, I mean, you look at the Salem West Branch game had a yeah. had a, a, a role in that outcome as well. Um, but Notre Dame Cathedral Latin, the number four seed, Alliance the number five seed. So Alliance gets to go on the road for that first round game. Notre Dame is eight and two. Uh, their two losses were to Cleveland Benedictine. Uh, a playoff participant in Division II uh, in overtime, and then they got waxed by Akron Hoban, 42 to nothing in Week 9. Of course, Akron Hoban may be one of the favorites in the state in Division II. They are 9-1. and one. Um, So last week they, they clinched uh, the number four seed with an impressive win over Parma Padua, was also finished 8-2 and two, um, in, in Region 10, so they're going to go to the playoffs. But So Notre Dame, we really don't know that much about them. Uh, but they're a play, they are a veteran playoff team. They, they made it to the state quarterfinals. They made it to the regional final or the state quarterfinals last year. Yeah, I think the thing Alliance has for them is that earlier game against Canfield, who are arguably by far the best team on their schedule. So they have faced a playoff caliber team already. So they can, and it seemed like they did learn from that what they do. Now it's going to see if they can translate that into the playoff. But I think that game ultimately could help Alliance with this playoff game. You know, at this point in the season, too, Jeff, you don't want to get too crazy with your game planning. Yeah. You, you you know what got you here, mm-hmm. and let's stick with that. That's Deuce Johnson and Howard Frazier on offense and just a really good rush-to-the-ball defense. Matt, I don't I don't think you and I have to get Coach White again. <laughs> I think that's what he's going to hand it off to number 21, right, left, middle. He needs a breather. Let's go with Howard Frazier. But – I, the only thing I would think Alliance, I think if they can keep defenses on it with a little bit of the threat of the pass, whether it's a Terrence Williams or Tyler John, I think that would really open up things even more for Deuce Johnson, who you know went over 2,000 yards for the year. So, I mean, that's 200 yards a game he's averaging. I mean, that's an amazing yeah. accomplishment. Yeah, obviously you're not going to use Deuce as a decoy, but even Coach Whiting said after the Marlington game that they probably ran the ball more. It wasn't the balance they wanted. They ran mm-hmm. the ball uh, about 90% of the time. Um and when you, if you're going to go deep in the playoffs, it's, yeah. I think it's pretty well established. You need to be a little more balanced. Yeah. But you're not going to, you, you still want to give the ball to your best player. And I think they have that capability. Maybe it was something they saw against Marlington that, you know, coaches usually don't reveal that kind of stuff that maybe the way Marlington was playing that forced them to run those 54 out of 60 plays instead of throwing more passes mm-hmm. that, you know, if a team comes up, stack the box. You know, I think they have the capability. We've seen it this year where they can throw the ball down the field and make big plays with their wide receivers. Yeah, and I, I, let's not underestimate, again, we've talked about it all season long, the the, the, the football smarts that Frazier has at quarterback, you know, and, and the ability to make something out of nothing. I, I don't know how many times this year, you know, he was caught in the backfield, made a move here or there, and, and just created something and, and at least got back to the line of scrimmage and, and, and allowed him to, to run another play. 
not and not be behind the, the the stick, so to speak. So I think that's a key for them as well. If he if he plays well and he has for really ten weeks, uh, I think you know that gives them a great chance. Yeah, I think one thing the Lions have, you know, a lot of seniors, Deuce Johnson, Howard Frazier, guys that have been playing for three, four years as starters. Yeah. That you know they've been through the wars of you know everything in the last three or four years of some struggles to the highs of this year. And I think that's what they need to rely on. I thought Howard Frazier played an outstanding game defensively against Marlins. There might be an overlooked aspect because he's the quarterback, but he also on special teams too. He, when Marlington got the ball back, he had a 69-yard punt that turned that I mean completely flipped the field. The Marlins, you figure, would probably get the ball about the 30 or the 40. Instead, they had to start at their own 20 after it went in the end zone, and that ultimately be, ended up being the deciding factor in that game. Okay. Well, make sure you check out the Alliance Review all week. We'll have previews of, of the playoff game coming up. Uh, and then review.com as well. We'll have live coverage Friday night from Notre Dame Cathedral Latin and, of course, all the coverage in Saturday's Alliance Review. And good luck to the Aviators. For Jeff, this is Rob. We'll talk to you next time.